What's up everybody? Game day is here once again for the Oklahoma Sooners. It's week five and the Sooners are back home for Saturday night's conference game. Big conference game with Iowa State. Uh, OU this week is up to number 14 in the AP Top 25. They're still undefeated at 4-0, but I do think last week's 20-6 win at Cincinnati revealed a few things about this team. Number one, that the defense, yeah, is pretty good. And number two, that the offense is still figuring out that run game. Got some work to do. The all Sooner staff was in Cincinnati, and of course we're going to have a full house on Saturday as well, from pregame to postgame as OU takes on the Cyclones. I'm John Hoover, publisher at All Sooners, and I want to bring in Ryan Chapman and Randall Sweet to help me break down OU Iowa State one more time this week. Game kicks off Saturday, 6 p.m., and it's on FS1. Guys, we'll start at the top. What's the one thing that concerns you most about this game? Is it is it Iowa State's defense, which we all know has been pretty salty under Matt Campbell, or is it that Texas game looming ahead next week? Yeah, Oklahoma was 6-7 and seven a year ago, and while things look considerably better, especially defensively, they passed that first test against Cincinnati, but that doesn't quite matter. I don't think they're quite good enough to look ahead yet. So when you look at this Iowa State defense, it has given a ton of teams across the Big 12 fits. It's been one of the best units since Matt Campbell and John Heacock formed that power uh, dynamic in, in Ames. And, and this was a group that last year, Jeff Levy was really, really good about being patient with them defensively taking what Oklahoma uh, was given and running the football. But the issue is this year, the offensive line in the running game has not quite synced up yet like Eric Gray and that unit did last year. So I think that Oklahoma needs to be fully focused and worried about that Iowa State defense. There are no Will McDonald's running around or anything like that, which is why you saw an offense like Oklahoma State be able to put up 27 points a week ago in Ames. But Oklahoma hasn't had that kind of consistency yet in the running game. And I just don't think they'll be able to take deep shot after deep shot with Andrew Anthony like they have so far this season. So full focus needs to be detail oriented on that running game for Oklahoma going up against the Iowa State defensive line. Because if they don't get that sorted out, they're not going to have a shot to run the ball next weekend in the Cotton Bowl, even if they try to look ahead to Texas. I really think that out of those two, Texas is the more dangerous of the two. Now, obviously, Iowa State and you know the defense in the look ahead game could always be an issue, but. Really, I think that with the talent that Texas has, with what we've seen them do already this year, I mean, going into Tuscaloosa, can handily beating a team like Alabama. Obviously, they've taken care of business against you know the teams like Rice, the teams like Wyoming. Last week against last weekend against Baylor, Texas looked really strong. Um, again, took care of business, did exactly what they should, and wiped the floor with uh, another Big 12 team. Um, so, I think that again, what we've seen from Texas with uh, what that offense can be. Uh, as talented of, of a roster, you know, recruiting-wise, stars-wise, as uh, Texas has, I think the Longhorns are going to be a much tougher test for the Sooners, especially uh, with, an, with them playing an Iowa State team that's depleted with, uh, obviously, the off-the-field probe. Uh, I think that the Sooners can, even if they do stumble, that the Iowa State talent is not enough to hold the Sooners back all game, and that OU uh, really is going to be much tested much more against Texas. Yeah, so my thing here is uh, is simple for a football team. Somehow you have to avoid the tendency to want to look ahead to next week's game in Dallas. It's the biggest game of the year. Everybody knows it. We've known it all year long. It's going to loom as the biggest game long after it's played. Guys, this is a classic trap game, and you got to figure out a way to beat Iowa State this week, then worry about Texas next week, right? Which, I'll admit, is easier said than done, I'm sure. Okay, uh, number two. Who's on the hook in your mind on Saturday for a breakout performance? Is it one of Oklahoma's running backs? And, I mean, you choose choose your fighter, right? Or is it the OU defensive line? Who needs it more? I'm going to say the D-line. I think you can get a big game uh, on the ground against Texas from really just about any random running back in the game. Dominique Whaley comes to mind. Damian Williams comes to mind. Remember those guys, right? But if you're going to beat the Longhorns this year, it's not going to be done with a 100-yard rushing performance. You're going to have to win the line of scrimmage on defense. You're going to have to get some real pressure on Quinn Ewers. Again, that's easier said than done against that Texas offensive line, I'll admit. But what do you guys think? Yeah, th this Oklahoma team is, is winning with defense. And I don't think that's going to change. Certainly not next week if, if the Sooners are able to turn around a huge result there. 
in the Cotton Bowl. And so for me, what I'm looking for, what, what I would like to see Oklahoma's defense go out and do is not just contain Rocco Becht, not the running threat that, that Emory Jones was a week ago when Oklahoma was so disciplined to keep Emory Jones in the pocket, make him throw the ball 40 plus times. I, I think that Oklahoma needs to generate a pass rush that not just pressures the quarterback, but is going to hit home. They're going to need that against Quinn Ewers and no time like the present to get that going. Rondell Bothor has been so close. He had one sack caught off the board by a, a neutral zone infraction. P.J. Adebaware has been super, super close. R. Mason Thomas coming back into the fray. Trace Ford, it feels like, really hasn't started to kick into high gear. It, it feels like this is the dress rehearsal for Oklahoma. Tighten up a bunch of that stuff before what lies ahead potentially in Dallas. So that's what I would like to see this weekend. If Oklahoma's defense can fire on all cylinders... I think Oklahoma will have chances, chances to take shots next week, maybe not necessarily this week in Seattle State defense, but that's all going to start with generating pressure up front. Rocco back a little bit more of, of a, a, a stationary target than what Emory Jones was last week. Certainly, Quinn Ewer is kind of in that ilk. I would like to see Oklahoma's defensive pass rush hit home against Iowa State in Norman on Saturday. I think that really the OU running backs need the bigger game. Now, the Oklahoma defensive line... The defense in general has been a strength this year. I know the secondary is going to get a lot of credit for forcing those turnovers, but a lot of that comes from pressure up front that the defensive line is forced. I don't think that those guys are uh, will feel the same pressure that this running back room has felt. Uh, you know, coaches, fans, media all season have been talking about how the running back room has not really, um, you know, been up to par with what Oklahoma is used to. Uh, again, the running backs themselves haven't been getting in regular rotation which I think can obviously put pressure on themselves. You know, everyone wants to earn that lead back role, but no one has yet, meaning that that pressure is still there to do so. And I think that um, I think that if the OU running backs come out and have a really good game, it would really boost their confidence and really show, um, you know, put on film for opposing teams going forward that, uh, you know, you can't just, you know, uh, sit back and let o Oklahoma, you know, uh, stop the pass because the running attack can still be dangerous, can still pick up some of those chunk plays. Okay, good stuff as always. Thanks, guys. Folks, please remember, bookmark us at allsooners.com for our daily comprehensive coverage of OU Iowa State. It's going to be all weekend long at All Sooners. It's wall-to-wall -wall as our staff rolls out coverage pregame, the in-game live blog, post-game interviews from players and coaches, our post-game reaction, the All Sooners podcast, of course, which is certified fresh from the press box, and so much more. Just keep it right here at allsooners.com. For Ryan Chapman and Randall Sweet, I'm John Hoover. See you guys.